Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for the final part in the crocheted custom character hat series. And I say character hat because that's basically what it's based off of, but you don't have to make it a character hat. You can personalize it, add your details accordingly, which I'll be showing you again in this video, just like I did the previous two that remember I'll be linking to the full series down below as well as the full crochet 101 series if you're just wanting to get started in learning how to crochet but anyway this will be about all the details that if you want to make it a kitty hat a bear hat an owl hat and so on and so forth well not all the details I'm going to be going over some very basic ones a couple of basic ear shapes and then how you can take that and modify it to suit you so let's go ahead and get started on that cat ear so i'm looking at my chart here that i i typed up myself because i created various different sizes and i'll be linking to this information in the description box down below that will have some of the basics basic a number of stitches for the hat itself plus the ear flaps if you want to add them and then the basic stitches for a couple of other ears like cat ears and so on so what i'm doing today since this is going to be a gray kitty hat i'm going to be making those cat ears and the ears each are going to have for this particular one are each going to have two parts but i will go more in details on some variations that you can do if you want to get started i'm making a hat to fit a child at least four years old clear up through adult then i'm going with my biggest size right here and what i have written here is real simple it just shows a bunch of numbers and if you don't know much about crocheting or the way i lay out my patterns you might not know what that means but the kitty ears show 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, and 24. And so those are the number of stitches per round. So what I'm going to start with in this particular one is I'm going to start with the magic circle, which I showed in the first video in this series but also went into more detail on a separate video in the 101 series so make sure you check both of those out so i'm just going to go ahead and get that started rather than explaining all that so what i want to start with since the first round is only going to have four stitches i'm only going to put four single crochets and i'm still using the j hook a six millimeter and then if you're in the uk or canada this is assuming this is correct and this is the sizes you go by that would be a size four the metric size is six and the state size is j or 10. so very diff very big difference in numbers okay so there's my four stitches and then just as before when you're working with the magic circle, this is what makes it so nice, is that you just pull that tail and that tightens up that hole so that you don't have a big hole in the middle, like if you start with a chain to make a ring and then crochet into the chain. Okay, so my next row is going to have six stitches. So as you might notice, I'm not like I would for, if you saw when I made this or any kind of circle, I'm going to actually the next round is typically doubled. Well, that's not how it's going to work here. So what I'm going to do is do one single crochet in the first stitch. And then I'm going to do two in the next stitch. And then I'm going to repeat that. So one, because I started with four and I'm just wanting to increase it to a total of six stitches. So I should have only two increases rather than an increase in every stitch that is what's going to give it that more pointed look at the end so that's important that you do that and then every row from here on out is only going to increase by two stitches so i do the same thing again but this time i'm going to increase to eight and in this case it is important that you put your increase in the same place every time so i did two of stitches one in each and now in that third stitch i'm going to put two so that gives me four stitches there now i need four more to make eight so one stitch one stitch and then two in the sixth stitch so that i'll have eight so now i'm on up to eight and here's a good point where i suggest 
you add your stitch marker. Here we go. So I always use a bobby pin as a stitch marker because to me that's the easiest thing to use and it stays in place. Yet it slides back out easy too. So it's important that you use a stitch marker because it's going to help keep you on track in case you get distracted, you lose count, you can't remember where you were, or you got to just put the work down for a minute. So, and also I forgot to point this out in my first video. It's a good idea to use your hash marks like this so you can count your rows if that's important, like especially when you're doing the cap part of the hat. I always would mark off my rounds as I went. Not that you can't count your rows this way. This way is just easier to do so you don't have to keep going back and counting the rows. So then same thing again. I'm going to increase to 10 stitches. So I do one, two, three. And then in the fourth stitch, I'm going to increase by two. And then finish it out. One, two, three. And then in my marker stitch, I'm going to do stitch nine and ten. And that marker stitch is in stitch number eight of the previous round. Pull the marker out, put it in that last stitch I just made. Then from there, you're just going to keep going up. Now, it's going to depend on the size hat that you're making. I have a total here of 11 rounds. So maybe instead of doing all 11 rounds, maybe you're only going to do uh, 9 rounds or 8. It's just going to be dependent on the size of the hat and how big you want those ears because this, the great thing about this particular style right here, this works great for donkey ears and zebra ears. You just got to add more to them. So at any rate, I'm, I'm going to finish this ear out, increasing it up until I've done all 11 rounds and I have 24 stitches. And then I'll explain what I do next when it comes to the cat ears. Okay, now that I have the ear finished, I wanted to explain some ways that you can turn this. You can see how that looks. It's good to put it on a mannequin or somebody else's head. So um, that way you can get a better idea, the placement of the ear, because you put it back too far. Well, the hats are usually kind of worn more like that. Then they're going to end up, ears are going to end up way back here. You might want them forward. So that's why it's a good idea to use something like this. Now, if I want to take this same ear, this little piece sticking out here, and make it into, let's say, a donkey or a zebra ear. Well, you can see here, the difference here is that I have this written down for the zebra ear, and the donkey ear is going to be very similar, though you may want to make it this wide. With the zebra ear here, I actually dropped the last two rows of increases, so these last two rows here wouldn't be here. But I then extended it out several more, four more rounds, so it would be a little bit longer. And then in that case, I also then, for the zebra in particular, and I think I did the same thing with the donkey hat that I made, is that I would then do, around the folded edges here, I would then do a contrasting color. So for the zebra ears, obviously the black. But then I just kept the whole body of the ear white. Just went around it with a single crochet in the black. And uh, and so that's one way to do it. With the donkey, I believe I did the same idea, but used tan. I think you'll know if you, you look at the picture I'll put in there. Uh, I, I just can't remember. It was a while ago I made those hats. So it was a, it was a sheep, a donkey, and a camel. So anyway, just play with the ear size according to the animal that you're making. If you're talking about the pointed ear, this is the best way to start. Now, this one ends up being almost a perfect triangle by the time you get it done. However, when you go to stitch it on, the best way to do it is to have it curved just a little bit rather than have it go straight across. It's going to look better if you curve it in just a tad, and that's what I do. But before we sew that on there... The one, the two things I need to point out is that when you go to cut this off, because I'm done crocheting this year, I want to leave plenty so that I can use this tail to actually stitch the ear onto the hat. And enough that I can go back over it a second time if I feel like I need to. So I'm going to leave it nice and long and cut that off. Okay, and so then you would do like a whip stitch to sew that on there. I'll explain that a little bit more in a bit. But for the kitty, I just think it looks better if you add a pink center to it. So what I do in this case, it does make a little bit more work, but it just, 
I just think it looks cuter. I'm going to make a separate little smaller triangle in here, but it's not going to be doubled over. It's going to be single layer, which means in that case, the like I have here, kitty center, then I'm going to start from the big side, the bottom side, and I'm going to work up and decrease as I go. I start with a chain seven because my first row is gonna be six stitches. So I just put that on there. There's no magic circle required. Now I'm just gonna crochet back into my chain stitch. So I'll have my first row of six stitches here. And then According to this, what I have here, I'm going to do another row of six. So it says six, six, then it says four, 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 then two, two, then one. So that means I'm going to do one more row of six. Then when I get to this row, I'm going to decrease it on the outside edges by two stitches. So one, decrease one stitch on each side, then do another round of four, another round of four, then, then decrease down to two, another row of two, and then decrease down to one, and that's where I'll have that point. So let me go ahead and do that next row of six. So just like I showed with the ear flap, you do your first decrease across these first two stitches by pulling up a loop in the first stitch, pulling up a loop in the second stitch, you should have three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull, pull through all three loops. Then I'm gonna do two regular single crochets, now I've got two stitches left. I need to decrease down into one, pull up a loop. And that last stitch is always the hardest one, pull up a loop. And now I've got four stitches. And so then for the next two rounds, I just single crochet across there. Now you'll notice if you're one that's been crocheting for a while, I'm not doing a chain one at the end of each row. I'm just turning and crocheting directly back into the row. Uh, I find I do a, that I do a better job of keeping track of my stitches that way. But it can also make crocheting into that last stitch a little more frustrating. So that's my last row of four. Now I'm going to do decrease down to two in this round, or row. Do another row of two. Almost, almost decrease there. And then decrease down to one stitch. And same thing here, when you cut this off, you could have done that with this end too, it would have worked either way. Leave plenty because what you're going to do is you're going to hand stitch that center onto the ear. Okay. Now, the other option you could do is you could switch back and forth from pink to gray as you're doing your rounds, but I don't always like the way that looks when you do it that way. I'm not going to show all this on camera, but I'll at least give you an idea. So you want a, a decent sized yarn hook, and then I make my own yarn threader, and I have a video out just on how to make this. It's super simple. But it, for yarn threading, it works better than your regular thread threaders, those little cheap wire things, because those things are just not strong enough and you'll break them when you try to pull the yarn through your needle. I gotta get my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. But that's just the best way to get your yarn through your needles to use some kind of threader. And I make mine out of a nice strong um, thread. It's gotta be thin enough to, to be able to double it over and fit it through the needle, but also strong enough that it's not going to break when you go to pull it through there. And then you'll just start doing like a whip stitch to stitch this into place. So by using the thread, the yarn that's already there, you just saved yourself a little bit of time and extra yarn by doing it this way. But when you, by the way, so I'm catching just one loop of one of those stitches back there, whichever one's closest, whoops. Gotta watch out for that to happen too. And anyway, you're just, I'm not gonna show all that right here. You're just gonna stitch that all the way around. It's not even as important that you do this part here. So if you left this part longer, you just only need to go up here because when you stitch the ear on, that's gonna be in place. But I prefer again to just anchor things down really good. So I'm gonna whip stitch all the way around and back up. All right, so I finished getting that stitched on there. And then what I do 
is I just take a small hook, a, a smaller hook than what I've been using anyway, to crochet with, and I grab that yarn and pull it inside the ear. So as long as you have an ear that's a double layer like that, you can hide all of your yarn up inside there. And then again, you're gonna use the same idea. You're gonna thread your this onto your, your needle. Mark where you want it to be. You're not gonna be able to stitch it on there very easily with, a hat and with, with it on a head like this, especially if you're using a real human head, but at least mark where you want it to be. You can mark using your bobby pins and even anchor that in place like so. And then again, like that. I find getting them just about that far apart to be pretty good. You don't want them way out here. Sometimes when you lay your hat out and try to put the ears in place and you think it looks good, then when you stitch them on and then you actually put it on a head, you notice they're, they might be down too far or back too far. So doing it this way is best. And you can see, here's the center of the hat way back here. But on this, you're, you'll see these ears are much farther forward. So I'm going to finish that other ear later and I'll take a picture of the hat once it's all done and, uh, and all the ears are stitched on there and show you what it looks like and I'll put it right here. What I want to do here, if I'm making a more rounded ear such as a monkey ear or even an ear like this, Hobbs's ear, bear ears and so on, the best way to do it is to start out with a circle, with your regular circle. So you're gonna start this whole thing off the same way like I showed in that first video. What I have here is five rounds where I did an increase on each round. Now, how much you increase is gonna depend on the size of the ear. So if you're doing uh, monkey ears or mouse ears, you're gonna be wanting to make those bigger than you would for a bear ear. So however many rounds you do it's been a long time since i've made ears like that so i don't remember how many rounds that i did on those but just play with it once you have your idea of increases and decreases down you can create and shape whatever you want so what right here i'm increasing up to i'm doing the sixth row so i'm just going to go ahead and do another increase so Increasing another five stitches, so five times six, that's 30. So I have a total of 30 stitches here where the previous round would have had 25. Okay, so I just went ahead and increased one more round, but I'm not gonna do any more on this because I don't wanna waste any more video time. But you can keep making that as big as you want. I brought in this, it's kind of dirty and used, but it was one of the original handle covers I had made until I decided to make them wider. But I have a video showing how I make these. Now these have two layers of yarn and you're not gonna wanna do that when you're making the ears. So just imagine this as a little bit smaller, not quite so thick. So let's just say I'm making a maybe a bear ear out of this. So this is the same idea. You're just making basically a cup and then you're gonna put it, sew it on there like that. And having it be two layers like I did for this ear or even for the monkey ears or anything like that, it's gonna give it more stability, more strength. It's gonna stand up better. Another type of ear would be like for the owls. The owl one is very, starts off similar to the cat ear, but you only increase once at least for the newborn. So you start off with five stitches in the first round, then you increase that to 10 stitches and you do seven rounds. So that's for the newborn hat. If you get up to the eye, to the owl ears in the adult size hat, which would be this size, then you would go five, 10, and then increase to 15 and then do eight rounds. So that's the same idea as the cat ear, but it's a lot thinner. And then you can put a little fringe at the end like you, I show in that hat there. Oh, and I even have panda ears written down here. So for the panda ears, this is again working in a circle. So 5, 10, 15, 20, and then I did 28 times. Now let's talk a little bit about the owl ears. The owl ears, I'm not going to show all this. I'll just show you in the photos of the owl hats I've made. You, you're making the circles and you're increasing each time and you're going to use different colors so let's say for this size this, if i'm making this full size hat i'm going to start off with black and i'm going to do eight stitches in that magic circle then and i just do one around then i'm going to go with whatever color eyes i want to make it and then i'm going to 
increase in every single stitch around. So I do 16 stitches of whatever color that is, green, blue, whatever. And then the, you finish off with the white and you're gonna do two rounds of the white. So you're gonna, and you're gonna increase that, since I started off with eight and then 16, I'm gonna increase another eight to 24. And then I'm gonna do one more round, increasing that one to 32. Then let's talk a little bit more about some other details. When I was doing, making these hats, Hello Kitty was a big thing again, like it was when I was a teenager. And what I did for that was the eyes, just like with my Hobbs, his eyes and his nose are made from felt. So in that case, because I want a cleaner look, this is what I like about uh, felt, is that you can get a little bit cleaner look, especially when you're talking about smaller things. And using felt is a great way to go. If you've ever worked with felt, it has a tendency to want to stretch and it can be hard to cut your shapes in such a way that, that you can get a nice clean cut. And what I discovered is that if I take some glue like this, just this gel glue is a good one for this, and I do a light coating of the glue onto the felt, and I just keep doing this, and then allow it to fully dry until it's hardened. And you can also use your fabric glue for that if you're using fabric glue. I usually will use this because it's a little cheaper. Then I'll let it dry and then I will cut out my eyes. So you want to maybe make some templates of the shape size that you want and then cut it in the shape that you want, just like these little ovals here. And then for his nose, the same thing. On those Hello Kitty hats, I did the same thing with the whiskers because well, it's got to have whiskers because that's part of the whole character. And so having that glue backing also will make those stand out and be a little stiffer. Then I would use fabric glue and glue those in place like I did here. However, if you're talking about something like this that you're going to give to a child or a hat for a child or just I say any hat, what I did is even though I glued all those pieces in place and let them dry, that was more just to hold it in place. I would then take a regular needle and thread and then in, in the color, so black eyes, black thread, and then go ahead and hand stitch those on just to make sure they stayed secure. So I really recommend that, especially if you're gonna do like a hat that has whiskers, anything that's long and skinny, that glue is not gonna hold. All it takes is somebody grabbing hold of that. I don't care how strong that fabric glue is. I could go over every type of shape and idea there is, but that would take a very long time. What I recommend is getting familiar with your increases and decreases. And this is how I was able to create my own patterns, not just for hats, but once I got familiar with how increases and decreases worked, I was able to then move on and create my own patterns because it's kind of like sculpting when you start doing that. And you can start figuring out how to create the shape that you want. So that applies to the amigurumi, the little stuffed animals. And that is actually what my whole hat is based off of because it works in a spiral. So for I'm going to show a few pictures as examples of things that I've created have basically sculpted on my own just by what I know about how increases and decreases work and where to put those in order to get the specific shapes just from what I know and what I was able to just work with and start doing the shapes and come up with that starting by just doing a simple circle like this and then working with it and figuring out how many increases and then do you want to decrease back down so if you're making like a full kind of spherical type shape or oval shape once you increase to get out to here you're going to decrease back down to finish that out so here's an example some people might know who strong bad is some people might not i saw somebody's pattern for a strong bad and also for the home star runner and i wasn't really thrilled with their pattern because in their pattern they made strong bad's head to round it was more like a sphere rather than more of an egg shape and so basing it off their pattern, I was able, and this is still when I was really pretty new at making amigurumi and before I really started creating my own patterns, I was able to work off the idea and then do my decreases differently so that the head 
took on a better shape that looked more like strong bed than the original pattern I based it off of. And you can do the same thing again once you understand how these work. Anyway, I hope this helps. So don't forget to check out the links I'll be putting in the description box down below for more about crocheting. And now you can get busy and make your own custom hat, whatever color, whatever animal, whatever character that you want to give as gifts or even make for yourself. And don't forget, I'll be putting the link to where I have all these numbers typed up. It's not instructions on how to crochet, it's just your stitch numbers according to the basic hat and the sizes, be it newborn, toddler, and so on. And I'll have some of the ears and eyes numbers in there as well that you can go by. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.